Hey, welcome to the Physics Classroom's video tutorial series on vectors and projectiles. The title of this video is The Motion Characteristics of a Projectile. What we wish to learn in this video is what is a projectile and how do you describe its motion characteristics. I'm Mr. H. Let's get started. A projectile is defined as an object upon which the only force of influence is gravity. The free body diagram for a projectile is shown here. You'll notice there's only one force here, gravity directed downwards. There's no air resistance affecting the motion of a projectile. We refer to such objects as free-falling objects. Like any free-falling object, a projectile can be moving vertically, but it can also be moving horizontally at the same time. Here's two pathways for an object moving through the air. In blue, we see the pathway of a projectile. There's no air resistance on the object that follows this path. But in red, you see the path of an object moving through the air, experiencing a little bit of air resistance. We would describe a projectile motion as being a no air resistance approximation of any object moving through the air. In a previous video, we discussed the idea of perpendicular components of motion being independent of one another. The video was just a few videos back in this series, and it was titled Relative Velocity and Riverboat Problems. It's worth a review. Projectiles move both x-word and y-word, and what we know about the motion of a projectile is that these two components of motion are independent of one another. That is to say that the horizontal motion of a projectile does not affect the vertical motion, and vice versa. These two motions are independent of one another. Let me use a simulation to illustrate this concept. In this simulation, we'll be studying the effect of the initial horizontal launch velocity upon the time for a projectile to, to fall vertically from the top of a 78 meter high cliff. We will be changing the horizontal speed from trial to trial, beginning in this first trial with a speed of 10 meters per second. What we notice when we start the simulation is the projectile travels through the air horizontally and vertically, and it takes 3.99 seconds to reach the ground. In the second trial, we're going to up the horizontal speed to 20 meters per second. And we'll see, does this increase in the horizontal velocity affect the time to fall vertically? And what we learn is once more, it takes 3.99 seconds to hit the ground. Let's try it again. 30 meters per second as the initial horizontal velocity. When we start and run the simulation, we measure the time to fall vertically to the ground to be the same 3.99 seconds. There's a pattern here. Increasing the horizontal velocity of 40 isn't going to change the time to fall vertically from the top of the 78 meter high cliff. It takes once more 3.99 seconds to hit the ground. Now, if you need to see a fourth, tr fifth trial, we'll do one here at 50 meters per second. But the lesson we learned from this simulation is that the initial horizontal velocity does not affect the time to fall vertically. Perpendicular components of motion are independent of one another. To illustrate this idea of the independence of X and Y motion, let's consider this animation of a ball launched from a launcher in the back of a pickup truck. What we observe about this ball is that as it moves vertically and horizontally, that its horizontal position at every moment in time is always above the launcher. It starts above the launcher, it moves upwards and downwards, it lands in the launcher, and at all moments in time, it's always above the launcher. This is an illustration of the idea that the ball's horizontal motion is independent of its vertical motion. These two components of motion are independent of one another. Now, when you see an animation like this, many times students say, ah, that would never happen. I don't believe in that. That's just rigged. Well, let me show you the real thing then. Here we have a lab cart equipped with a launcher and it launches a ball upwards, and as it moves upwards and horizontally, we notice the ball remains above the launcher position at all times and lands in the cup. You gotta believe in physics when you see that. Here's why this concept is so incredibly important. A projectile's motion is influenced only by the force of gravity, and the force of gravity is a vertical thing. And as a vertical force, it will have no effect on the horizontal motion of a projectile, since perpendicular components of motion are independent of one another. So as a projectile moves through the air, its horizontal velocity will remain constant, but its vertical velocity will show a changing value. We can think of projectile motion as being a blend of a constant horizontal velocity and a vertical acceleration. This simulation will illustrate that idea. In this simulation, we're going to drop a ball and allow it to fall vertically. 
Then we're going to turn gravity off, and we're going to launch the ball from an elevated position. Then we're going to turn gravity back on and launch the ball with gravity. Let's begin with the vertical drop. As the ball falls downwards from its elevated position, we observe the familiar dot diagram that's characteristic of accelerated motion. It experiences a free fall acceleration. Now let's turn gravity off and launch the ball horizontally. What will happen? Well, the ball will travel along a constant velocity pathway in a horizontal direction because there's no gravity to pull it down. A projectile is a blend of these two simultaneous motions, the constant velocity in the horizontal direction and the accelerated motion in the vertical direction. So when we turn gravity back on, we'll see the magenta ball moving through the air and its location at any given moment in time is simply the blending of the red dot and the blue dot's location. Check it out. And the result is that the projectile moves along a parabolic pathway. So gravity causes this vertical acceleration, but what causes the horizontal motion? Well, that's easily explained by Newton's first law of motion, the law of inertia, that if the forces are balanced or there's no balance forces whatsoever, then an object in motion would stay in motion with the same speed in the same direction. In the absence of horizontal forces, once projected, a projectile will continue to move with a constant horizontal velocity, as predicted by Newton's first law. This little animation of a plane dropping a package illustrates the idea of the law of inertia. The package starts right underneath the plane, and once released, it continues with the same horizontal motion and continues to remain directly below the plane. The horizontal motion is governed by the law of inertia. The vertical motion is governed by gravity. Now, I know what you're thinking when you see an animation like this. You're thinking, no, that would never happen. I don't believe in physics. Prove it. Well, thanks for asking, because I happen to have this demonstration here of a cart equipped with a pole with a magnetic ball that's released when the cart gets to the little trigger on the track. And what you notice about that ball is that it always remains above the cup on the cart. Its vertical motion is independent of its horizontal motion, and it continues to maintain that constant horizontal velocity remaining at the same horizontal position above the cart at all times. You gotta believe in physics. The goal of this video has been to understand what a projectile is and how to describe its characteristics. And this slide serves as somewhat of a summary of the entire video. First, a projectile is an object upon which there is only one force. It's a vertical force. It's gravity. It's directed downwards. Since forces, when unbalanced, cause accelerations, we would reason that there is no horizontal acceleration for a projectile. But that motion is independent of its vertical motion, and there's a vertical force that would cause a vertical acceleration directed downwards and having a value of 9.8 meters per second per second in the negative or down direction. Now, since there's no horizontal acceleration, we could say that the horizontal velocity is constant. But there is a vertical acceleration of negative 9.8 meters per second per second, meaning that the vertical velocity will change by negative 9.8 meters per second each second of motion. This is sometimes rounded to negative 10 meters per second for each second of motion. Now, if we think about displacement, we'd have to say that horizontally, it has to reflect a constant change in position each second, somewhat like this little dot diagram. But vertically, there's a changing position vertically each second, somewhat like this dot diagram. This describes the motion of a projectile. It's at this time in every video I like to give you an action plan, a series of next steps for making this learning stick. But before I help you out with an action plan, could you help us out? Here's three things that you could do. You could give us a like or subscribe to the channel by tapping on the bell or even leave a comment in the comment section of this video. Now here's how I can help you out. Here's three items from our website, any one of which would be a series of next steps that would help make this learning stick. The simulation you see mentioned here, there's a link in the description section below. That's an awesome way to experiment with a projectile and learn from experimentation. The second item is a concept builder. It's an awesome way to help make this learning stick. And then finally, the third item is a tutorial page from our tutorial section on our website. It's a great way to brush up on some things we discussed in this video. Whatever you do, I wish you the best of luck. Hey, I'm Mr. H, and thanks for watching.